Invite your friends, your family to watch. We are back. So this is video two of day one. I accidentally put the wrong flyer earlier. I said day two. No, but this is day one. The second video. We finished one video. It was about eight hours. So in case you missed that one, you can always go and catch up. And if you know anyone who watches on YouTube, tell them to come on Facebook. We are on five platforms, I think five or four platforms on Facebook. Hallelujah. God bless all of you. So I was doing, um, I was preaching a powerful message showing some pictures of places or how I grew up, right? Before the video ended. And I told you guys I was coming back in a few minutes. But then my workers had a surprise for my mom because today is my mom's birthday you guys remember right i told you in the first told you in the first video that today is her birthday and god called for a fast on my mom's birthday and i have to obey god even though we had plans already on how to celebrate it we had to shift everything but my workers still had something they wanted to do for her so i had to join them to just wish her happy birthday that's why i stayed a little longer you guys want to see the video i did let me show you the video i did that made me stay longer happy birthday to you happy birthday happy birthday Happy birthday to you. <laughs> you now, sixty four. How old are you now? 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 How old are Bless you. Hey. May the good Lord bless you. Hallelujah. May the good Lord. May the good Lord bless, bless you. you. May the good Lord bless you. Amen. 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 Amen.
that part about <laughs> when Misha goes home. Jay, oh my God, Jay, we surprised her. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah, <laughs> mommy. How do you feel with this surprise? This is a big surprise. Thank you, dear. Very big surprise. I was just relaxing in bed, you know. That's right. You deserve it. Watching uh, the live video. And then all of a sudden, Michael came in. Grandma, come, come, come. I have a surprise. I said, oh, God, what surprise is this? I want to rest now. And you're fasting. You're already... And he said, okay, come right. I said, no, I cannot go out right away. Because I don't know what you guys have in store for me. So let me go at least. Get it. You know, get in the shower and come out. Oh, Father, thank you, Lord. Yeah. If not, I'm come, just come running down to be in a video. Hey! Oh, Father, thank you. That's right. Oh, my God. Jay. I like that part. Jay. May the good Lord bless you. 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 Mommy, we love you. Jai, my God, this is <laughs> I'm like this. Jai. Mommy, don't be surprised though. We are fasting, my, my but we have to acknowledge something. It's Alexis here. Yeah? He said, no, I'm not going to tell you. It's Alexis. <laughs> Alexis is the only one. It's Alexis here. Yeah? It's Alexis here. Yeah? It is well. Me. All right, guys. Oh, I'll be online soon. Thank you so soon. much. Thank you so much. Let me. So you guys see why I stayed longer. <laughs> it's like they came right when I had finished and my mom was on the bed. Michael had to tell her to calm down that there's something for her. So she was getting ready. I had to wait. We had to wait for her to take a shower, get ready. She didn't know what was coming. And that's it. So this is, this is, this is, this was a surprise for her. And this is the picture that we took me being like this i just went downstairs to join them my son my workers alexis took down but alexis is in this one 64. you guys see that picture on the wall that's the angel picture i was talking about the other day that i said somebody had done for me in new york that's the face of the guy that came in my dream you see it and if you watch that video some of you may have seen those boxes on the corner those are all clothes though clothes t-shirts things for ministry when i travel those are the clothes that i bring to you guys so so their house my parents house is filled up with my teeth <laughs> for my ministry and then alexis had done um alexis had done some um what's it called some short short clips besides this one that i did she did some short clips i'm gonna see if i can show some of her they're really short but i want to show it it's like a few seconds she did a clip when they were working to walk into the house <laughs> all that time i was almost getting done with the first video so i said i was gonna show you guys all of those videos so let's 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 watch the short short clips hallelujah So it's a surprise for our boss lady today, our supervisor. Yep. Mm. Supervisor, supervisor, happy birthday, supervisor. Supervisor, happy birthday, supervisor. <laughs> Don't go to that no more because you're playing around. Now I'm not going to go to the other person. I'm not going to go to the other person. I'm not going to go to the other person.
these are some short short videos though from that from alexis phone so i'm just putting them together what what this is all you guys are telling you to just come out eh? wow Thank you, Lord. Yeah. If not, I'll come, just come running down <laughs> to be in the video. Yeah. Oh, Father, thank you. That's right. Oh, my God. Chai. I like that part. Chai. Make thank a good Lord. Thank you. Bless you. Make a good Lord. Bless you. Make a good Lord. Bless you. the good Lord bless you. May the good Lord bless you. May the good Lord bless you. It's Alexis here. He said, No, I'm not going to say it. it's Alexis. <laughs> Alexis is the only one saying it's Alexis here. It's Alexis here. Not knowing yeah, the whole crew. All right, guys. Oh, I'll thank you all so much. Thank you all so much. Let me get the hug. Oh, no, I don't lovely. think the hug part. Uh, well, the hug they go. Uh, on behalf of the staff of PDF. Wait, let me hug you. <laughs> Sam Mavis. <laughs> you will not give me again after this show. Because, because you take that. Right? I love you, mommy. <laughs> I love you too. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh my God. Hey. Okay, Michael. You guys are going to tap your nose. So you are part of the surprise, mm -hmm. man. When did they, uh, uh, you know, give, give you the news? <laughs> Actually, you were just in bed. You were just in bed too, okay? You all went up center. Birthday, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you for the music. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's really added the flavor to it. Oh, <laughs> Father. Uh, 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 Alexis, I can, I can hold. It's, it's beautiful. You guys did a great job. Because this is this? Yes. Oh, 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 I look like an expensive yeah. purse. Yeah. Chai, and she likes it. She's definitely going to rock that. <laughs> Chai. Wow, um, you guys went all out. Of. Thank you so, so, I don't so try. much. Chai. Mm. 
7 27 2021. Hope your day is filled with little moments that make you feel remembered, celebrated, and loved for who you are. And that's someone very special. Happy blessed birthday. Alexa. Happy birthday, love. Happy birthday. Many more years to come, Maris. Happy birthday. Many happy return. Mm. Okay. No wonder my palm. My palm has been my palms actually, not just one. Wow. I think it's way big enough. Happy birthday to wonderful you. you. <laughs> when someone wonderful like you has a birthday, each candle represents something remarkable. A friendship made, a kindness done, some wisdom shared, much love given. When someone wonderful like you has a bad day, the world glows in celebration of all the things you've done over the years to make it a better place. Happy birthday, love. Oh my God, love, you kill me with all this, all this sweet, sweet words over here. That was love. Love, yeah. Uh -huh. Thank you. Oh my God. Yeah. You guys, oh, you never finish you. <laughs> you think well, pocket. Many pages. Yeah, so when someone wonderful like you has a bad day, like it's it. a bright and special moment in time for everyone around you, as bright and special as one of a kind, wonderful you. Happy birthday. Now, happy birthday and God bless you. God's blessings upon your life. Samari, happy birthday. Happy blessed birthday, man. May God bless and increase you more. More grace. Love, Alexis. Oh, thank you all so much. Thank you all so much. So much. So much. See, I'm just here looking. So, these were the short videos that Alexis did. The only one I did was the first one I showed. So, I said, when I come online, I'll show it since today is our birthday. Normally, I would like to start a fasting or do anything after today, but the way God works, man, when God picks a day, we go with that day. So that's why you see me showing the video now. If not, me and my siblings, we're going to do our normal thing, you know. But God comes first, but we're still able to at least celebrate her. So God bless all my workers for what they did for my mama. She is grateful, and I'm grateful too. God bless you guys. You know, because my mom, I hired her as their supervisor. Remember, I told you guys. So they are, they are treating their, their coworker. <laughs> and I knew that would be a part of it. I just finished the video, and I heard that they were downstairs waiting. So that's why I just, I guess God wanted me to be a part of it. Cause I was not going to be, I was going to be live preaching while they were doing that thing. But God has his ways. Hallelujah. My God. So from the other video I was doing, video one, before I had to go, because it was almost eight hours already. Did anybody learn anything? I feel like I need to show the last few minutes of video one, because we were really getting somewhere before the video ended. Of how I was showing you guys mats that I slept in. I was showing you um the lamp that I used to um to read. I was showing you the, the mud house that I lived in the village with my father's mom while I was going to school, like secondary school. You guys learned a lot. Even now, this video you saw is my parents' house, so I'm still living there. You see how it is now. If it was my house. Everybody's gonna be white. I'm telling you, once you enter, angel go open door for you. <laughs> so that house you just saw now, that's my mom's, my mom and daddy's house. Do you understand? That's not my personal house. That's their house. And I think only me alone have three rooms in this house. 
I have this room for God that I turn to wife. I have the room where I sleep. I have the room where I have because that thing you saw in that video, there's more. That video that I first showed, you saw a lot of boxes, right? Those blue things. Those are all my things that I travel with. You guys, dresses that I give you guys, t-shirts. I we still have some in the studio. And then we have another room where I have more because sometimes when I travel to many countries, I take hundreds of dresses, hundreds of t-shirts, right? Like now I told you guys I got some dresses getting ready for program. So me alone. <laughs> and then oh, there's another part. The entrance, the entrance, the living room entrance. I have dresses there too. Remember, I was telling you guys of how I had a video where I showed you guys that I ordered 500 dresses. Oh, yeah, I have dresses in that entrance too. So even though I live with them, it's like I took over their house. <laughs> and most of the things that I give away for free at my program. I'm going to show you this video I did, um, I think, some months ago now. These are the 500 dresses that I recently ordered. I still have some more. I still have, like, maybe 300 more. But I wanted to get as much as possible so that when I start traveling again or when we start doing programs, this is how I normally order my dresses. And then... um I also have boxes of colored dresses. Um, let's see. I have boxes of colored dresses. I want to see if I can show you that part. Let's see. This box here. These are mostly colored dresses. And some more white dresses are here. Right? See them? All this is to prepare for travel. Hallelujah. So people don't know what I do. They think it's so easy to do this thing, but I spend a lot of money for these things. To so God be the glory. So as you can see, even in this house, everything here is to give away. It's for program. I don't really own anything here. <laughs> Is mostly my travel, my ministry things, free gifts, dresses, t-shirts, colored. Like we have some more colored here that I showed you guys I ordered. So I'm always thinking of you guys. I'm always thinking of my followers. And my parents' house is just fully loaded with all of that stuff. <laughs> so this is your woman of God. Even though I was talking about how I didn't grow up from like a rich place, even though now I can afford whatever I want, I still live a simple life. Everything I have is to be given away. I don't really own my own house. I'm still living with my parents. And everything you see is not, I can't say it's mine. It's stuff that I will give away to my members. Can you see this life? I could have gone to buy a big mansion and did you see how simple my parents house look this is the same house i told you guys what that the chair was so oh my god where are those chair tape um chair um videos the chair was torn and we didn't change it in fact let me show you guys this her video again her birthday video because some of you were not on it because you guys need to see the simplicity and i need to get somebody should send me that video of the chair that we had the chair that we had chair was getting peeled we had it like that for months i didn't change it it's not like i didn't have the money but sometimes we'll use something to cover it and sit on it it's just we just live simple like that <laughs> So I'm going to show this our birthday video again for those of you that just came up. Look around the house. You, all those boxes are closed to give away. Very simple. It's their house. I could have moved out, but I'm not led to yet. But I have the money to. But with me and God, 
it's by the leading of God. I don't just go because I can. I go when God says go. Let's watch this again. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> How old are you? You're now 64. How old are you now? 64. How old Bless you. Hey. May the good Lord bless you. Hallelujah. May the good Lord bless you. May the good Lord bless you. Bless you. Amen. Give it again. Hooray. What was that called about? We surprised her, yeah! Hallelujah! Mommy, how do you feel with this surprise? This is a big surprise. Very big surprise. I was just relaxing in bed, you know. That's right, you deserve it. Watching uh, the live video. And then all of a sudden, Michael came in. Grandma, come, come, come. I have surprises. Oh, God. What surprise is this? I want to rest. Now. And you're fasting. You already... And he said, okay, come right. I said, no, I cannot go out right away. Because I don't know what you guys have in store for me. So let me go at least. Get, you know, get in the shower and come out. Oh, Father, thank you, Lord. Yeah. If not, I'm come, just come running down to be in a video. Hey! Oh, Father, thank you. That's right. Oh, my God. Chai. I like that part. Chai. May the good Lord oh, you. bless you. May the good Lord bless you. May the good Lord bless you. May the good Lord bless you. Mommy, we love you. Chai, my God, this is <laughs> I'm really like this. Chai. Mommy, don't be surprised, though. We are fasting, Michael, but we have to acknowledge Alexis, something. Said, it's Alexis here. Yeah? He said, no, I'm not going to tell you. It's Alexis here. Yeah? Alexis is the only one. It's Alexis here. Yeah? It's Alexis here. Yeah? It is well. All right, guys. Oh, I'll be online soon. Thank you so soon. much. Thank you so much. Let me... Somebody oh, said, Shady. the simplicity is inspiring. Father, we are learning. Now, don't get me wrong. I could get a big mansion if I want it. Yeah, I could get my maybe like 10 mansions if I want it. But I don't have it because I don't need it right now. And God hasn't told me to move. As long as I have this my room here. And my nice closet where I pray. All right. I'm fine. That's the difference between the real and the fake. The fake get it to show up. The real get it when it's time, when God says to. And they don't really get what they cannot afford or what they need to show off. They get what is just necessary. Because most times I'm working, I'm always in this room preaching or in my studio preaching. That couch you saw me sitting, that's the couch where I stretch out. Before we got that couch, the couch that was there for seven months, the tin had peeled. My workers, my workers come to the house. They see it peeled. I'm sure they'll be wondering. This woman gives us money, does all these things. Can she just change this couch? Let me show you the couch. So this is the couch in my living room. It's peeled. This is your woman of God's the couch. This is the part where I always used to sit. It peeled. This one right here. It's peeled off on the head. Sometimes we cover it with this with this cloth right here. Or and then now I move to this seat. I move to this place right here to sit. These are the only two ones that are good. These ones. They've all peeled. So as you can see, I'm busy helping people 
But my own chair in the house needs to be changed. And this is my face, so you know. It's Did you see that? You guys have seen this video before. I said, let me show you before we change it. It was torn like that for months. My workers come to the house. They'll be wondering what kind of woman of God is this? She's giving people thousands doing this. Her couch. And that part you saw that really tall, that's where I sit. Because I'm always on that seat. Even when they sleep, I'm sitting there. And then I should, because I want people to see that once God blesses you, doesn't mean you have to go and squander his money anyhow. Spend, or when woman of God blesses you, doesn't mean you should spend it anyhow. Use it wisely. Because you can't be using it anyhow. And I'm living a simple life, and you want me to keep helping you financially? It's not going to work. Because some people don't know how to use money. The moment you give them small money, they go and buy things they can't afford. Doesn't work. So now, when we bought the new chair, I did a video, the new one that you guys saw in the video as I'm wishing my mom happy birthday. I did a new, I did a video. Hallelujah. Ah, this one. This video froze. Lord. All right, somebody send me the new video I did. I got a new cut because this one is frozen. Send me a better one. The new video they sent me that I did, it's frozen. Maybe I'll find it on YouTube. YouTube should be better. Yeah, so that's right. And you see how I'm happy? I'm content. I'm I'm very simple. <laughs> I'm very simple. I don't get problem. I don't get problem. The anointing. Money cannot buy this. But all these material things, they will fade. Holy Spirit. Okay, Tia, you already got it for me. God bless you, my darling. She she already downloaded it for me. I didn't even know. Let me show my face. Good job, good job, good job, good job. You ladies are really helping me out. I don't know, my leg is just so tingling. I think God is pleased that I'm showing you guys this. And don't get me wrong, like I said, I can buy 10 houses if I wanted to. But I don't have to because God hasn't told me to. Where I am, I am just fine. Yeah, I'm just fine. But this is a message. What I'm doing now is a we message. You, God. God is teaching people. You don't have to get what you don't need. Or you don't have to get more than what you need. You can live a simple life and still have money. And you know what I mean? Like This is the new one. Praise the Lord. This is the woman of God. Evangelist Princess Belemzi. So last week I showed you guys my couch. That was old and peeling. And I was saying, well, the couch in my house is old and peeling. But I'm not concerned about it. Instead, I'm being led by God to help others. And I was just telling you guys how me and my family, we live a simple life. Well, God has blessed us with a brand new couch. And this is pure leather. My mom loves it. This is my parents' house, so whatever they want is fine with me. My mom loves it, so I got it for her. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, yeah. So, I have a new one now. God bless all of you. Some of you were led to like, uh, let me show my face. Some of you were led to to add some, um, give me some money to buy a couch. But actually, I didn't need money. Oh. As at the time I showed that video, I already gave my mom money to go get it. But God bless all of you that sold towards it. It is well with you. May God reward you. And for anyone watching this video that is looking for a place to stay, a car, a couch, or looking for furnishing in your apartment, or looking for a job, or whatever you're looking for. May God bless you in the name of Jesus. May God favor you ASAP in the name of Jesus. May God provide money for you to take care of what you need to take care of. 
in the name of Jesus. And this is very comfortable. It's a recliner seat. You can lay on it. I'm so happy. God bless all of you. It is well with you. I'm headed to the studio now. I'll see you guys in a few. All right. Wow. Did you guys see this fine lady? Hi. I need to go back to juice it. See my face skinny. Hey, father. Fufu. Fufu and okra zoo don't mess me up. <laughs> Did you see my face? <laughs> I was using them. Oh my! Everything was just high. Father, help me! Oh, Rosu, don't mess me up, <laughs> mommy. After this fight, I'm coming back to using. Please, please. Oh my! I watched that video and I'm like, who's Who's that girl? Wow! Hey! I'm wearing white, deceiving myself. I don't fight. I don't wear white, tight and tight. I don't fight. I don't fight. Oh my God! Jesus Christ! My God, please don't be angry. Let me let's play that video one more time because I can't believe this. This is, a, this is going to be a motivation. <laughs> Praise the Lord. This is the woman of God, Evangelist Princess Belemzi. So last week, I showed you guys my couch that was old and peeling. And I was saying, well, the couch in my house is old and peeling. But I'm not concerned about it. Instead, I'm being led by God to help others. And I was just telling you guys how me and my family, we live a simple life. Well, God has blessed us with a brand new couch, and this is pure leather. My mom loves it. This is my parents' house, so whatever they want is fine with me. My mom loves it, so I got it for her. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, yeah, so I have a new one now. God bless all of you. Some of you were led to, like, uh, let me show my face. Some of you were led to, to add some... Um, give me some money to buy a couch, but actually I didn't need money. Oh. As at the time I showed that video, I already gave my mom money to go get it. But God bless all of you that sold towards it. It is well with you. May God reward you. And for anyone watching this video that is looking for a place to stay, a car, a couch, or looking for furnishing in your apartment, or looking for a job, or whatever you're looking for, may God bless you in the name of Jesus. May God favor you ASAP. In the name of Jesus, may God provide money for you to take care of what you need to take care of. In the name of Jesus. And this is very comfortable. It's a recliner seat. You can lay on it. I'm so happy. God bless all of you. It is well with you. I'm heading to the studio now. I'll see you guys in a few. All right. Did you guys see that? 40 year old woman looking like one young girl. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. This is my breakthrough. <laughs> if you live with me this time, you will laugh. Eh? You even know I'm anointed. Though. You gotta play. I play too much. <laughs> I'm coming back, Father. I'm coming out. <laughs> I'm coming out. My breakthrough is here. Oh, I got it. <laughs> I'm coming out after this fast. Alexis, get ready. We're doing this 30 days. That's right. I need to get back my face. Did you see my face in that? Oh, I see me. Chop, chop. And I only eat once a day. Oh, that's the thing. Once a day, but this thing messed me up. My God. <laughs> but as we're doing this seven days fast, please send an angel to, to come and do liposuction on me when I'm sleeping in Jesus' name. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Let an angel come in the dream and come and suck some fat out, please. That will be my breakthrough because I don't really ask for much. The only breakthrough I need is to come out from this fat cage. 
<laughs> Please, I need to break through. <laughs> oh, this is my daughter. You're not serious. It's okay. It's good to laugh. You know, many people, they started watching me. They said I laugh too much. And that's how they fell in love with my video. So get used to it. If you're here, you're going to laugh a lot. Laughing alone is deliverance. You didn't know. Hmm. That's right. I need supernatural weight loss. Y'all need to tap into it. And the funny thing is, I was not going to stop my juicing until an angel came in my dream and told, it was talking to a lady to stop at day 36. And after that dream, after day 36, I couldn't do that juicing again. Not knowing I was going to get a lot of fastings coming up. Like God himself had to stop me in my dream. So that I could prepare for the fastings that we had. Because we were getting back to back fasting. Seven days, three days, all of that. If not, I was going to go for 90 days. But then God saw that there was a lot of fastings coming up. And that's the thing. I can't really, I can't really go that long. Because there's always going to be a fasting. It is well. A lot of women here did the juicing with me. We need to get back. After this fasting, we'll discuss that. All right? So I was talking about how Jesus Christ came from a poor background. And then when he became anointed and everything, no one really cared what background he came from. All they see is a powerful man of God. You see what I'm saying? And that's how some of you wishing that you were not coming from this family where you are. When God take you into that place where God is taking you, it would not even matter where you came from. You understand? It won't, it won't matter where you came from. And I started showing, the last part of the video is really interesting. I think we should go back and replay like a few minutes towards the end. Because I don't want to show all those pictures of the mats. And the, I want us to, to just watch the video to refresh so I can continue from where I start. Hallelujah. If I now you should be more powerful than before when you did not know, they should see you and run now. Do you understand? Hallelujah. It says, um, do not live in fear of anyone. Forgive them. Forgive them. For us to be forgiven by God, we have to forgive. I always preach forgiveness. I'm a woman of God. If you want to be forgiven, you have to forgive. That's how God works. If you say you won't forgive, you too will not be forgiven. So you pick one. Do you want God to forgive you? Yes, then I have to forgive. Now, forgiving doesn't mean I need to be your best friend. No. Forgiving means I don't carry anything in my heart. I don't have any ill feeling towards you. You understand? And forgiveness is for you so you can be free, right? I know you say you are forgiving them, but it's really for you, not them. And just because you forgive doesn't mean they're not going to be punished by God. They are still going to reap what they sow. So your forgiveness does not change anything. They're still going to go through whatever God wants them to go through. Do you understand? Say so forgive them. Even when God reveals your enemies to you, just stay calm. And allow him to lead you on what to do. He will always fight for you as long as your heart is pure. If you don't stay calm, you might kill somebody and land in jail. Because depending on what God shows you, it might be so bad. And if you're someone with a temper problem, you might get up. And if you have a gun, you might shoot them or you might hit them with something hard. And they may just die. So you need to have self-control. You need to stay calm. Because God is going to, um, God is really going to show you a lot. God is really going to show you a lot. But you, you're going to need to stay calm. And allow God to, to direct you. So you don't make any mistakes. So you don't mess up anything. He says, stay calm and allow him to lead you on what to do. 
He will always fight for you as long as your heart is pure. Your heart being pure means you must not be wicked too. Meaning you yourself, you're not plotting evil for others. You, all you think of is good about this person or about people. Because we cannot be saying we want God to reveal things to us about people and we ourselves are witches. We, was, we ourselves were wicked. <laughs> what makes us different from that? So make sure your heart is pure so God can declare you innocent, vindicate you, fight for you, right? And then stop blaming yourself for being connected to that person who caused you so much pain or for being born into a wicked family or town. Sweetie, um, you didn't put yourself in that family. You did not create yourself. You didn't decide that you wanted to be from Nigeria or from Kenya or from Liberia. Like, man, you were innocent. You just found yourself in a woman's belly. <laughs> Some people will be like, man, I wish I was from America. Man, I wish I was from Canada. Man, I don't know why I came from Nigeria. I wish I was from... What? You mean the God who created you? And make you come out from that country made a mistake? No. There's a plan. There's a plan. Maybe you are the one. You are going to be the Moses of that generation. Yeah, maybe it's you. Maybe you are going to be the David that will kill the Goliath in that town that has trapped everybody. No. All of you, tell the truth. Is there... Sometimes you wish you were from a different family or different background or different country. Maybe your family is full of witches or maybe, I don't know. Have you ever wished that you were not from the family that you currently are from? Like, this is not even something you should be worried about. Because... You didn't, you didn't do that to yourself. You just found yourself where you found yourself. Now, if you were adopted, that's different. But you were not adopted. Ah, somebody said she used to do, say that many times. Somebody said this message is for her. Yeah. Somebody said me, a different family. Yeah. You know, people start to wish that when the suffering is just too much. The suffering is part of God's plan for your life. I don't know how many times I have to preach this message. It's hard to accept, but it's the truth. Yeah. But God doesn't want you to wish that because then you would think God made a mistake and God never makes mistakes. God brought you from the right family. That's the right family. Yeah, that wicked family. That's the right family for you. Because there's something in you that will come out too. Yeah. That will help the whole family, the whole town. That's why a lot of you were, were brought to school of power. So by the time God is done with you and he puts power in you, you're going back to that family that you wish you were not a part of. And you're going to be the light of that family. That's right. So it's not a mistake that you came from that country, from that broke family that people are making fun of, the poorest family. Hey, Jesus Christ did not come out from a rich family. It was a poor family. In fact, when they even gave birth to Jesus, there was no room. Like, he didn't even have a good hotel, uh, a good hospital or anything. Like, a whole Jesus came from probably the poorest, the poorest family that couldn't even afford a nice place to give birth to a baby. Think about it. The way Jesus was, was delivered when, he, when his mother gave birth to him, um, it didn't seem like this guy would be great or anything. <laughs> it didn't seem like this guy would 
be anything. Yeah. They didn't have the best hospital, the best nurses or anything. No. Just think about that. That's how God works. Great people, great things come in disguise. But heaven is celebrating. But the world don't see it. <laughs> yeah. So you, you are supposed to be great or you are great, but you came in disguise from a very poor family, from a wicked family, from the smallest village, the smallest community. Mm. <laughs> That's right. Sometimes you guys even have food to eat for some days. Yeah. But there's greatness in that house and nobody knows. That's the life of Jesus. Nobody suspected that this, this boy, this one, something great will come out of him. Can any good thing come out of Nazareth? Like, no, no, this one, no, no. When their mind was not even there, they were thinking the Messiah will come from maybe a palace or something. That's how God works. They will look down on you and the family you came from. <laughs> but God will shock all of them. That's how God works. So that family you came out from is the perfect family for God's plan in your life. It's a disguise. Yeah. Look at me. Where I came from. A, a small town called Bakana. Some people like from some people live in Portacot, but they still don't even know where Bakana is. <laughs> My parents were not rich. In fact, our families are just poor. That's right. God did it that my father came to America. He had no one. God brought him here miraculously. Yeah. God took all the credit for everything. Nobody can take credit for anything. Look at me now. God is using me to bless people. Thousand dollars. This is that. But where me I came from. Even our house in the village, my mother's family, the house. My father's family, the house was like mud house. Where I stayed with my grandmother when I went to high school um, in the village, it was mud house. Mud, mud, yeah. It was mud house. It was just recently my father went to build. And it was me. I even helped him. Would you believe that this woman of God was staying in a mud house with her grandmother going to school back home in the village? I'm, it's not brick. It was mud. I don't know. If, somebody send me a picture of a mud house. Please, please, please. It was a mud house. <laughs> Who's going to know that she's going to be so great and she'll be helping people, giving them, even paying rent, buying car for them. The one that her father's house in the village is a mud house. You can't suspect that. Mud. The kind you see in Nigerian movies. Mm. <laughs> this message is for somebody. You see some rich people, maybe like rich Donald Trump kind of people, and you are like, um, maybe I should have been from this family because uh -huh, somebody found something like this for me. Good, good job, guys. That's some real mud house right there. Although our own was not this bad, but mud is mud, man. All right, ladies, thank you. I got it. Jesus, some of these mud houses now are wow. wild. Uh huh. Uh huh. Thanks, ladies. Love you all. 
That was the mud house right there. And now this woman of God is here. Blessing people anyhow. Two thousand, one thousand, ten thousand. Hey, what? Are you kidding me? How come? Belema? From where? The Belema that we know? No. That cannot be. Yeah. Mod house. Mod. It was recently my father went to build and had brick. But where I stayed with my grandmother, telling you guys that I went to school back home in the village, it was a mud house, guys. I don't know if I have a picture where I, I took in that place. I'm going to show you guys. It's to encourage somebody now. Somebody that thought God made a mistake about their life, where they are from. That's a mud house. This one even looks nice, so... You guys, if you watch African movies, you've seen these houses before. This is a mud house. This one is typical. This is this looks more like it. <laughs> yeah, that looks more like where I, I, I grew up. That's right. Although our windows were not like that. But that's pretty much where I stayed to go to high school. That's where I stayed to go to high school, guys. Your woman of God. Uh-huh. All these are even better ones. These are good mud houses. You see it? And now I'm in America. I have new car. Big ministry. Helping people. I lived in that house for three years, going to class SSM, junior, JSS 1 to 3, class 1, 2, 3. And we didn't have electricity in that house. I never saw electricity in that house while I was in that village for three years. We used lantern. Somebody sent me a picture of lantern. Or sometimes I go and buy candle. I have suffered though. Yeah. But look at me now. This is going to encourage somebody that thinks their life is the worst. It's not where they brought us from. It's where God is taking us to that matters. It's not where you are now. It's where God is taking you. Yeah. Mud house. I used to study using lantern. Lantern. Yeah. Oh, I wish my father had a picture of the house before he built this one. I used to have a lantern. When they are sleeping, I will turn on the lantern, the lamp, and I'll be reading. Yeah, that's what I use. Uh -huh. Thank you. Nobody sent lamp again. I already got one. Thank you, ladies. I already got one. This is perfect. This video will soon end anyway. God is up to something. This is the lamp we had in our house. Sometimes we'll have to go and find kerosene. That's how I studied while I was in high school in the village. That's what we use in the mud house. And guess where I used to sleep? Do you want to hear? And you know I'm not lying. Ask my mom or dad. I slept on the floor on a mat with my cousins. I would sleep on the mat. Mat is like sleeping on the floor. <laughs> Our grandmother slept on the bed. It was one small skinny bed for only her. We slept on the floor. Mat. Somebody show me a picture of a mat. <laughs> this woman has been through it all. Yeah. My mommy is watching. I insisted that I want to go to school in the village. I use a mat to sleep. Sometimes rats will be biting our feet and our fingers. We had some demonic witchcraft rat. I don't know where these rats were coming from. Yeah. 
witchcraft rats were biting us. We used to wear socks and gloves to sleep. <laughs> I know you were laughing. I told you guys did, but we they wear socks and hand gloves. <laughs> you know how they dress up people in the in the coffee that I did. I will wear socks and hand gloves because rats will be biting us there on the floor while we're sleeping. Some of you have anyone had that experience where rats bite them? Uh -huh. Thank you. I got a picture of a mat. God bless you, my darling. This message is for you. Thinking that sleeping mat is what I'm talking about. Thinking that God made a mistake. This is exactly the sleeping mat we used to sleep on. Man, this, is, this thing is bringing memories to me right now. For all the years that I stayed in the village going to school, I slept on the floor with this mat. And we'll be two or three that will sleep on that mat. So we didn't have a lot of space. Do you see? That thing is directly on the floor. And look at me now. I'm in America. Comfortable. And nobody wants to remember where I'm coming from. When Jesus started doing the work of God, powerful, anointed, nobody remembered the way he suffered when he was growing up. All they know is they see a powerful man of God now. When God takes you to that place, <laughs> your beginning or where you used to be, the family you're from, it won't matter. It is who you are now that will matter. Hey, somebody shout, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So I'm going to end here for Praise the Lord. I had to replay that because I'm going somewhere with this message. And while it was playing, I went to the bathroom. I was getting so hot, so I went to go shower real quick. But I was listening to it. And while I was in shower, you know what God told me? God said that some people, one of the reasons they have not received financial breakthrough is because they are wasteful. Like they are wasteful and they are going to like not know how to manage money when god gave them money like they like to buy buy spend spend you understand like they don't know how to econ economize they don't know how to manage money and he said that there are some of you on here that this is you that i'm talking about like every time money comes in your hand you want to buy things you want to spend you don't know how to um economize you don't know how to you don't know how to manage you're wasteful like you see little money you just want to spend it like is anyone like that here he said that's why you have not really had the kind of money that you're supposed to have because uh-huh some people say that's me all right like i heard this clearly while i was in the bathroom i'm like oh my god you see how one time God said, I trust Belema with my money, right? I trust her with my money. And I just, all this thing of me showing you guys where I live, with my parents, you would think this woman of God has a big mansion somewhere. It's not like it's bad too, but I'm strictly led by, by the spirit of God. And God is fine with me here now because I even travel a lot. So my son has to be here with them. And I, I really get things because of necessity, not because it, I have, to, God has not even released me yet, but God said some people break through for financial. It's a little hard for them because the way they spend money, it grieves his spirit. He said they are wasteful. They are always buy, 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 buy. Like even what they don't need, they buy. Once the moment money, if you give them money now, if you bless them with money now, the thing they even say they will use it for, they don't use it for. They start doing other things that they did not even talk about. I was like, wow. Because we are fasting for breakthrough in every area of our life. And a bunch of you need financial breakthrough. How are you handling the little that you have now? God is watching you. How are you handling the little that you have now? 
are you using it based on necessity or are you excessive how can you get more when you are so wasteful you understand i see a lot of people say me 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 it's actually more people than i thought like i was in the shower when i, I was quickly bathing but i had this one because i was getting so hot i don't know if you guys saw i was sweating a lot and then everywhere else is cold <laughs> but here it's so hot and because of how i was sweating i said man i need to pour cold water on my body even the cold water was hot on my body i said too much fire <laughs> but i feel a little better now so it was one out in the shower that was telling me that i was like wow wow so they are wasteful so they cannot handle much money because they are even for ministry you have to use money for what god says it's for that's why i always have because i don't really i showed you guys all those boxes all those dresses my parents house is filled with things for the ministry when i travel i give free clothes i showed you before how it looks when i give free dresses let me show this video again because we have some new people all the ladies will get free dresses as i'm led to give them So that's it. So you see boxes in my house. It's either free t-shirts or free dresses or, you know, like just things for the programs. I don't have a closet. I don't have a closet. Everything I wear, even these dresses that I wear, you saw how I was giving them in the program. When I wear them, I fold them. I keep somewhere. When we come to program, I give. It's not because I cannot afford all these things. It's, it's like I'm here on a borrowed time. I'm just here to do quick, quick work. So I'm not so concerned in getting many things. I don't know. And that's how I get to understand how Jesus lived his life. That's why he said foxes have den, birds have nests, but the son of man has nowhere to lay his head. Meaning even birds have a place to sleep. Foxes have them, but him, the son of man, him, the, the anointed, the most anointed man in the world. He does not have a place to call his home. Not that he cannot afford it, but he's so concerned in his father's work that he's not even thinking of five nice decorated house because he's always in different towns every day. Like he's not in one place now for you to understand that life you have to be living that life where your mind is so focused on god and his work that you even forget that <laughs> you need to change your couch that is torn or you need to go even a car god had to tell me to go get a car it took three weeks before i finally went because i don't really drive anywhere i don't go anywhere my workers were taking me back and forth to the studio sometimes alexis will come and pick me up sometimes marvin will pick me up sometimes love and i even like driving with them because i get to talk to them one-on-one -on -one. but god told me it's time for me a car this woman did not have a car until god told her to get like i didn't buy a car for myself <laughs> that's why i did that video to show you guys because it's hard to believe i'm not saying it's bad but it's like i'm so busy always online that even the car I have now is parked there. I haven't gone out of this house since. You know the last time I left the house? Since Sunday when we did that program. The Thanksgiving day. I haven't gone out. I've been online preaching. So even the car I have. If I'm going out it's to the studio. Or maybe to go do my eyebrow. To run one or two errands. I need to go anywhere. So why would I go and buy 10 cars. Or 5 cars. When I barely go out. The one that I have, if I barely drive it. You got to know these things. You got to get things based on priority. Like, what do you need? Based on necessity. Like, what do you, you know? If you don't need it, don't get it. Even now that you don't have so much. Stop by buying. Buy, buy. Save money. Economize. Don't buy the most expensive because you feel the money is there when... Even the cheaper one is better than the most expensive. Like, don't just go and just show up and spend money anyhow. Don't be wasteful. Even Jesus, when he when he prayed and God multiplied the fish and the bread, 
when they all ate the thousands, the five thousand ate, he said, gather all the remaining so there will be no waste. Even Jesus did not want fish and bread to waste. Because God doesn't like that. God likes people that he can trust with his power, his money, his gifts. The way you treat it will determine how much you will be getting from God. I want to read this scripture because I was talking about Jesus earlier, right? Luke chapter 2 verse 7. Or oh, let's start from verse um, verse 5. He took with him Mary to whom he was engaged. Who was now expecting a child? This is Joseph taking Mary that he engaged to get married to. And she was now expecting a child, Jesus, right? And while they were there, they, tra they had traveled to the village of Nazareth, right? Hallelujah. So he took Mary and, you know, she was pregnant. So while they were there in Nazareth, right? The village of Nazareth in Galilee. While they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. This great, great child that an angel visited her about. That when he comes, yeah, he will be great. Mm. He will save us from our sins, right? You will be thinking that, wow, when he comes, we'll be so rich. Things will be better. No. No, be so. Some of you, your parents were told about you before you were born, just like me. My parents were told about me before I was born. Hallelujah. That I will be great. But I still grew up as a poor child. That's right. So even though they have predicted so many things about you, you're still not seeing anything right now. You're still broke. <laughs> right? But there were a lot of prophecies about you. Wonderful prophecies. How great you will become. How powerful. How rich. But up till now, you can't even pay your rent. Things are not even working, right? But don't worry, it's coming, right? Is it? And while they were there, verse 6, the time came for her baby to be born. And then verse 7. We're talking Jesus right now. Verse 7. She gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no lodging available for them. A whole Jesus. No lodging, no room for this great child i had to show you the scripture so it's not like i'm just talking when you were born maybe your mom didn't even have money for the hospital bill or maybe they even had you inside the house because you guys they couldn't afford to take you to the hospital maybe sometimes you didn't have milk to drink except like the other children drink you were just sucking breast a lot for a while because your mom did not have money for Man, there's some stories. There's some really sorry stories about some of you here. But great things have been told about you. There was no room. For the son of God. The one that Angel Gabriel came and told her about. Before she even got pregnant. The one that me and you will accept him as our Lord and Savior and be saved. The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. He came into this world as a human being. And there was no room for his mom to stay. She wrapped him in some clothes. Put him in a manger. They had to manage in a place like... I'm sure what will be running through our head. I thought this guy is supposed to be great. A promised child. Why are we still suffering? I know the Bible does not cover all of that. But some of your parents have thought that about you. I had dreams of this one. And they were told all great things about us. She's suffering now. She can't even pay her bills. She doesn't even want to go to school. Like, yeah. 
which is attacking her a lot. I am so blessed. My soul has found rest. So reading this about Jesus, that there was no room available for them, him and his parents. So they had to put him in a manger. No one would just see the child. Like, no one would see the child physically and think anything great of him. Because they go by what they see. This one, they go by what they see. They judge by what they see. This child looks poor. This child cannot be great. This family is a poor, poor, poor family. Poverty. But in heaven. <laughs> Hey, my God. In heaven. <laughs> Angels are celebrating. Mm. Now, let's go to verse 8. He said, that night there were shepherds staying in the field nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared among them. And the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified. An angel appeared. But the angel reassured them, don't be afraid. He said, I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. The Savior... And there was no noise about it. It's only angels that are talking about it. It's not on the news. The king is not announcing it. How come we don't know? It was God himself that was announcing it by sending his angel. So some of you, you are in a place where nobody even noticed your family house is in that place. But heaven knows that someone great has been born. Someone that will shake this world, doing powerful things for God. There are some of you that after this fasting, God will deliver you and you will begin to walk into your destiny. Greatness will begin in your life. Yeah, it's time for everything. It's your time to come out. It's your time to shine. He said, the Savior, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David, and CNN did not carry it. It's not even on Facebook. Nobody knows. Just his mother... And a husband, and maybe one or two people that helped her give birth. Nobody knows when you were born. Can somebody relate to this story? You slept on the floor. You didn't have money to pay school fees. Sometimes you barely had food. Your house was so poor that sometimes when it rains, water will enter through your roof. But heaven is announcing that God's chosen is in that house. And people are like, God's chosen? Who? Which house? There's nobody great in that house. They are all poor. Somebody needs to be able to relate. This is your story right now. Great things, great people come looking poor. Come looking like, is this it? So this is to encourage you that there is greatness in you. You may not have right now, but when the time comes, you will have so much that you will not even be interested in it. You will just be focused on your destiny. Like I'm focused on my destiny. He said, the Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David, and you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of clothes, lying in a manger. So even the way he was born, the way they were tying him up, 
the manger is all part of God's plan, how God wanted his son to be born. In the eyes of the world, it looks like a curse. It looked like poverty. But in heaven, this is exactly how God wanted it. So that family you are in, that's exactly where God wanted you to be from. The poverty level, that's exactly how God wanted it. Some people want to be in America because everybody's in America. But God kept you in Nigeria. God kept you in Kenya. God kept you in Cameroon. Yeah, that's exactly where God needs you right now. That's why no matter how many times you apply for visa to travel to America, they decline you. Your friends will apply, they will approve them, but you, you want to run away from your destiny, from your destined location. Do you understand? You want to go where others are going, flourishing, but you are meant to be here. Your destiny is here. There are some people that they get deported when they go to these other countries and they cry, not knowing that God's hand is in the deportation to go back home because that's where God wants to use them. There are some people that they travel to big countries and they suffer there until they go to they go to their village they go back to their city and they start to do well it's not everyone that is meant to travel out of the country if everyone leaves the country who's going to save the country who's going to help the people there can't you see god does not make mistakes god knows why he placed you in that remote place we love you jesus you are the light of that town, we are here because of, you. of that place. There's no one like you, Jesus. He said, suddenly the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of angels, praising God and saying, glory to God in, in highest heaven and peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. So many angels came to worship because one child was born. One child that there was no room for him to be born. One child that in the eyes of people, he was not a big deal. It was just like a poor baby that was born. But a lot of angels are coming from heaven to sing to the glory of God. When the angels had returned to heaven, you don't know how many angels came down to sing when you were born. There is people that probably did not see them, so nobody told you. But there was always something about you when you were born. When the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, Let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. They hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph, and there there was the baby lying in the manger after seeing him the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this child all who heard the shepherd's story were astonished but mary kept all these things in her heart and thought about them often the shepherds went back to their flock glorifying and praising god for all they had heard and seen it was just as the angel had told them a great child has been born. Angels announce him. But the world did not recognize him. Because he didn't come out from a palace. He didn't come out from a rich man's house. But when the time for announcement comes, nobody can stop it. The anointing announced him. That's right. The anointing put him out. Like me, the anointing announced me and put me out and changed my destiny. That's right. Changed my life. Now I'm a blessing to not just my family, to the world. And that's the same thing with you. God will give you a breakthrough. Hallelujah. So I have to put that in so we can see Jesus, right? 
And Jesus is the perfect example. So don't feel bad because you came from a place. Jesus came from a worse place. That there was no room for him and his family to stay. They had to put him in the manger. Is yours, was yours that poor? Are you encouraged? Yeah. Now you know God does not make mistakes. God does not make mistakes. You are where you are because that's where God wants you to be right now. All right. So I was reading the post that I had about how everyone has an important role to play. And then I got to the part where I say, stop blaming yourself for being connected to that person who caused you so much pain or for being born into a wicked family or town. That's when I started explaining all these things. I say, God created everyone and he allowed the connection to be made because he knows what he will do at the end. Hey, God created everyone. God allowed the connection because God knows what he will do at the end. He placed you in the family. He placed you in that family you belong with that last name that sounds funny that you don't like people hearing that last name. God knew the, the last name before he told you or he brought you from that family. Some people have to even change their last name. Some people don't even want to identify with their family because they're so ashamed of them because they're so poor. But God put you there. <laughs> Oh my God. He said that, remember, he led Jesus to choose Judas as a disciple. It wasn't a mistake. It was all part of his plan. I talked about that earlier. Do you know there are some people God will tell you to connect with them? You will even have a dream about it. You will get confirmation. But when you connect with them, Later, you will find out that they cage you. <laughs> You'll be wondering, Father, I fasted. I prayed. You even confirmed to me that I should connect to this. So where was my mistake? I don't understand. Why? Why did this happen to me? Did I make a mistake? No, you did not. You got confirmation from like two, three people. To be connected to this person. <laughs> Has anyone had issue where it was God himself that connected them? It was God that even told them to marry that person. It was God that told them to hire that person. But that person caused them so much pain. That they were thinking they made a mistake. They were thinking they were manipulated. Their dreams were manipulated. God told Jesus to, to choose Judas. Jesus did not make a mistake when he chose his 12 disciples. God saw ahead what will happen, but he still picked Judas. I want to read the scripture where he picked them. There is nobody like you. Let's go to Luke chapter 6 from verse 12. One day, soon afterward, Jesus went up on a mountain to pray. And he prayed to God all night. He went to the mountain, secluded by himself to pray. And he spent the whole night praying to God. That's what the Bible says. Luke 6 verse 12. This is before he chose them. He took himself to the mountain to pray. And he did not pray for 30 minutes, for one hour. He prayed for the whole night. So this is a serious prayer. <laughs> How many of you pray for a whole night? Some of you, before you make a decision, 
you probably pray for a few minutes so far, but Jesus prayed for the whole night. And then verse 13. Verse 13, it says, At daybreak, he called together all of his disciples and chose 12 of them to be apostles. Here are their names. So after praying, after talking to God, and God told him the people that he would choose as his disciples, he called them and he picked them. After praying for hours all night, no sleep, serious prayer, Father, choose my disciples for me. I want to hear their names clearly. Okay, he was praying, probably speaking in tongues. We don't know, but he was praying. And God gave him all these names, downloaded the name because Jesus had over 70 disciples because there was a time where he chose about 72 disciples and he sent them out. So there were many people following him. But from out of those many, he needed to pick 12 that will walk closely with him. So he went to pray the whole night so that he can be able to choose them. So when he came back, he chose them and the Bible lists their names on verse 14, 15, and 16. Somebody posted verse 14, 15, and 16. The names of the 12 are listed and you will see Judas among them. Simon, whom he named Peter. Andrew, Peter's brother. James, for some of you that don't know the disciple names, because I just asked you earlier in the other video, <laughs> I said, how many names do you know? Some of you just know Peter and Judah. Some of you know John, Peter, James, Judah. Some of you don't know all of them. Shame on you. <laughs> I say, shame on you. <laughs> you don't know his disciples. Hey. If this was an exam, a lot of you would fail. Oh. <laughs> if they say the only question in this exam is to name the disciples of Jesus. So we have Simon, whom he named Peter, Andrew, Peter's brother, James, John, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, son of Alphaeus, Simon, who was also called the Zealot, Judah, the son of James, Judas Iscariot, who later betrayed him. Hallelujah. So Judas was listed among who later betrayed him. So do you think he made a mistake after praying all night? No. You did not make a mistake to be connected with that person that ended up becoming a Judas in your life. God connected you with that person because that person has a role to play in your life. Unfortunately, they turned out bad. But then it's not really unfortunate because God knew they were going to turn back. But for you, it was unfortunate because you trusted them. You thought because it was God that gave you the vision of this thing or God that gave you the answer after you prayed the whole night or you thought it was going to be a perfect relationship because it's God. You did not expect any disappointment. You did not expect any betrayal. You did not expect any witchcraft involved. But God was not surprised. God knew this person before he, he gave you this person. Remember that scripture I read? Somebody posted it again. Proverbs 16 verse 4. The Passion Translation. He said, the Lord works everything together to accomplish his purpose, even the wicked are included in his plans. Even the wicked are included in his plans. Meaning even the Judases, the witches, the false prophets, the sorcerers, the betrayer. He said they are included in his plans. He set them aside for the day of disaster. So in your life, there is no way that you are not going to encounter a wicked person. Especially you, you, who have a great destiny. Jesus began to encounter wickedness from the moment he was born. I'm going to show you. Let's go to Matthew. Matthew chapter 2. Right? Matthew chapter 2. 
this little baby called Jesus started to experience wickedness from when he was a baby. Hmm. Let's read from verse 1. Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod. About that time, some wise men from eastern land arrived in Jerusalem asking, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose, and we have come to worship him. King Herod was deeply disturbed when he heard this as everyone in Jerusalem. He called a meeting of the leading priests and teachers of religious law and asked, Where is the Messiah supposed to be born? In Bethlehem in Judea, they said, for this is what the prophet wrote, meaning it was prophesied that he will be born, right? In Bethlehem, right? Or they say this is what the prophet wrote, meaning this was what was prophesied. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not least among the ruling cities of Judah. For a ruler will come from you, who will be the shepherd for my people Israel. Then Herod called for a private meeting with the wise men, and he learned from them the time when the star phase appeared, appeared then he told them, go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child. And when you find him, come back and tell me so I can go and worship him. Liar. This man was lying so I can go and kill him. That's what he meant. So I can go and kill him. Not go and wash. This, this is just a baby. And a baby that was just born. And somebody already planning to kill him. He said, after this interview, the wise men went their way. And the star they had seen in the east guided them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with his mother, Mary. And they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasure chests and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. When it was time to leave, they returned to their own country by another route, for God had warned them in a dream not to return to Herod. After the wise men were gone, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, flee to Egypt with the child and his mother. The angel said, stay there until I tell you to return, because Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. This baby is just a few days old, or maybe a day old, or two days old. And somebody already wants to kill him. Are you understanding what I'm saying? There are some of you like that. Even before you started even knowing who to connect with, People have already started wanting to kill you. Even in your mother's womb. So which is being exposed not by God to you is not a new thing. They've been trying to kill you since you were a baby. False prophet trying to kill you now is not a new thing. Man, they've been trying to kill you since you were young. This baby was still fresh. And Herod wants to already kill him. That's how you know greatness. Why are you fasting for a breakthrough in every area? They have locked many areas in your life. Because there is greatness in your life. They see greatness. Ah, somebody said she was poisoned when she was young. Are you seeing that? He said she was poisoned when she was young. Meaning her own is being since she was young that they wanted to kill her. Some of you can relate to what I'm saying today. Oh. Some of you, like me, now look at my left eye. I have retina detachment. I can only see from here. But I'm still a powerful man of God working. My own attack will be today. Don't say they've been attacking me. <laughs> some of you, you have some kind of deformation in a part of your body or something growing in your body or maybe i don't know it's all part of them trying to kill you why because you're gonna be great afflictions upon afflictions it's too much in fact 
You are the one that they afflict the most in your whole family. You are the one that all the witches gathered to destroy in your whole family. You don't understand. Everywhere you go, somebody wants to kill you. In your office, they want to kill you. In, in your job, at your school, everywhere, even in church. Anywhere you go. Even friends that God even tell you to connect to, you find out later they are witches. Even a man that you marry, he too, he's, he was set. <laughs> it's like you're wondering, what is going on? Now God is about to reveal things to you guys. You will be shocked. Some of the people you trusted, when he reveals, you're like, oh no, no, please, Father, all my life, everyone has turned out bad, please. The, the kind of destiny you carry is too heavy. When I was praying that prayer for God to reveal secret things, to show you things that you don't know. Some of you were crying and you don't know why you were crying. Some of you are just tired of knowing because you've already known many people and you just, you're not ready for any more. It's like it's too much. The attack is too much. You are tired. Because you are going to be great. So they are not going to stop. Ah, somebody said, I was wondering, when is it going to stop? I'm sure some people are thinking like that. I was wondering, when is it going to stop? Like, I am tired, Lord. I am tired. Oh, I've said that to God. I say, Father, please. I can't take any more. I'm tired. Like, when will I enjoy somebody that I really love or that's been good that I will not hear a story about? Hey, Father, help me. This small baby, Jesus, baby Jesus, Herod wanted to kill him. Now, let's continue reading. Verse 14. That night, Joseph left for Egypt with the child and Mary his mother and they stayed there until herod death this fulfilled what the lord had spoken through the prophet i called my son out of egypt so it was a prophecy being fulfilled that they ran away from egypt and they ran he said i called my son out of egypt out of egypt right it was a prophecy that they had to go there to egypt to be fulfilled so it was a prophecy that this child, they will try to kill him. So it was a prophecy that witches in your village will gang up to kill you. Wow. So your life is, is the fulfillment of a prophecy. All this your suffering is fulfilling a prophecy about you. Wow. Oh my God. But Herod, Herod was furious when he realized that the wise men had outwitted him, meaning they tricked him. He sent soldiers to kill all the boys in and around Bethlehem who were two years old and under, based on the wise men's report of the star's first appearance. Because of one child, they killed all the two-year-old and younger boys. Because... They couldn't get to kill one. So even because of you, some people have lost their lives. Because of you, some people have suffered. Because of you, some people have been afflicted. Because they couldn't get you. Because of you, the family you came from, they are suffering. They are afflicting them because of you. And you're wondering why. Because you are great. You don't know yet. But I'm here to tell you today. That's why God brought you to a school of power. This is not a regular ministry. This is a different ministry. 
it is because of you that the affliction in your family is high because of you they've even killed some members of your family or there are some people because of how great they are anyone that tries to look after them dies because they can't get the child they get that person to make the child suffer maybe they'll be passing them from one orphanage to one orphanage or something why do they want this child so bad why do they want to cause this child so much pain because they see the star of this child if some of you come here and tell us your story of where you are from where you be, the people that men will cry here it's like misfortune of a misfortune like terrible things because of jesus this man killed all the boys in and around bethlehem who were two years old and under i'm sure this will be in hundreds one child because of him many kids were killed Herod's brutal action fulfilled what God had spoken through the prophet Jeremiah so even this act of killing all these children was a prophecy fulfilled but it looked like a day of disaster like wow all these children are dying what is going on but the bible said it's a fulfillment of prophecy from prophet jeremiah wow wow so many things happening in your life that look like disaster is actually prophecy being fulfilled It's a herald brutal action fulfilled what God has spoken through the prophet Jeremiah. A cry was heard in Ramah, weeping and great mourning. Rachel's, Rachel weeps for her children, refusing to be comforted for they, were, they are dead. But overall, Jesus is not dead yet. They didn't touch him. You, with everything you escaped and you are here today, they couldn't kill you <laughs> because you're not meant to die like that. You're supposed to fulfill a great assignment and you haven't done it yet, so no one can kill you. That's right. I don't even know why God is preaching this today, but something is happening in this fast. A lot of things are going to happen. A lot of people will begin to understand why they went through many things or why they are still going through many things. Why things are just a certain way. Why Why them? Why me? Why me? Why me? You know, you've been asking those questions. Jesus Christ had it worse from day one that he was born. Because of him, they are killing children. Even him moving to Egypt with his mother and her husband is inconveniencing because who do they really know in Egypt? They left everything. They left their family here, went to Egypt, not on their own accord, based on obedience. And they probably did not pack enough of things to go. They probably suffered while they were living in Egypt because, hey, it's not as comfortable as when you are living in your own hometown. And they did not live there for a week or two. They stayed there for a while until the angel came in the dream and said, you can go now. Just imagine how did they live in Egypt? How was their house there? Probably one of the poorest houses. How was life there? Well, look at this child that they are carrying. It's supposed to be great. But look at how the ordinary mind cannot comprehend this. Why would God not give his son the best life? Why would his son be like this, running to Egypt, 
going to live like a suffering person and running away? Why would even Herod try to kill all the children? Why didn't God stop it? Why didn't God, hey, why did God not stop it? Questions upon questions upon questions. But they said the Lord works everything together to accomplish his purpose. Even the wicked are included in his plans. He sets them aside for the day of disaster. He led Jesus to choose Judas as a disciple. It wasn't a mistake. It was all part of his plan. So in all things, give thanks to God. And I posted this on all platforms. And some of the scriptures I posted with this was Jeremiah 1.5. Somebody posted the New Living Translation. It says, I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. Before you were born, I set you apart. And I appointed you as my prophet to the nations. God knew you before you were formed. Before you were born, he set you apart. It's because he set you apart. That's why they want to kill you so bad. And he appointed you as his prophet to the nations. And then the second scripture was the one I just read earlier. The Lord works everything together to accomplish his purpose. Even the wicked are included in his plans. He set them aside for the day of disaster. Proverbs 16 verse 4. God said there's somebody watching here that after today, when you go to sleep, an angel will appear to you. And they will ask you, did you understand what I preach? You will say, now do you understand why you are going through what you're going through? That's why God says you got to pay attention to every word that I'm speaking. Because God said there's somebody here. You have been asking him a lot of questions. You have been wondering why your life is like this. And this message is answering your question. And God will visit you. And he will ask you if you understand what the woman of God preached. Now do you understand why your life is like this? And you're going to have this dream. You will have this visitation. Because you have so many questions that you've been asking him. And he's answering you with this message. Meaning he sees everything you're going through. He knows all the wicked people in your life. He allowed you to be from that family. It's not a mistake. He knows all the affliction they've afflicted you with. The next scripture is Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster. I'm sure if you if you read what I have said about Jesus, they are plans for good and not for disaster. Good, good when I couldn't get a room for me to be born. Good when all these people have to die because of me, right? You'll be asking all this, right? How in the world is this good? That's what you'll be asking, right? Father, you are saying you know the plans you have for me. Plans for good, not for disaster. I don't have a job right now. Nothing is working for me right now. I need breakthrough in all, in all areas of my life. I don't even have any money. I can't get married. But you are telling me you have, right? Come on now, somebody say this. Don't some of you question this? Yeah, some of you have questions for this scripture. When you read it, you are like, um, plans for good and not for disaster. And nothing is working in my life right now to give you a future and a hope. Man, I'm hopeless. I don't have any hope. I don't have it. What's what future is here? How many of you have said this thing? Come on now, tell the truth. God is watching. Some of you, this scripture, you're like, hmm. My life is a disaster right now. Hmm. My future is a mess. I don't have any hope. I'm hopeless. I'm almost homeless. But he says, I know the plans I have for you. <laughs> Jesus Christ on started messy. Started bad. But look how he came out. Yeah. But it's like I question this all the time. Somebody say, I was asking God yesterday at work and crying. Now I'm getting answers. Okay. So you are the one God is talking about. A lot of people say they have these questions. Oh my God. Look at that. Are you seeing that? 
Wow, I'm just having a lot of tinglings. God is really helping you guys today. Wow. This fasting is so special right now. Wow, look at this. No wonder you are here to learn, to understand things better about your life, to know that you've been set apart by God. The family you came out from, you wish you didn't come out from there. You don't understand why your parents are, that, are like this. But God says, I know the plans that I have for you. Wow. The scriptures don't lie. God does not lie. Some of you, eh? After this message, you have a powerful encounter, man. Because now you have an understanding. You will begin to accept where God brought you from, where God placed you. You begin to accept whatever God shows you, the deep revelation, the deep secret. You will accept it well and know that it was part of God's plan. You will not blame yourself. You will not blame anyone. You will know. Wow, look at this. Almost everybody. Almost all of you. This is amazing. I'm having so much tingling as I'm preaching this message. It's like I'm, I'm just feeling a lot. I was very hot earlier when I went to go shower and came back. I feel good. Like everywhere in the house was so cold, but here was hot. But now I'm having tinglings. Tinglings. Like heavy tinglings. Wow. This message is for you. Wow. Wow. This is like everybody. This is everyone. <laughs> this is everybody. <laughs> Have you guys seen the name? This is everyone. Wow, no wonder this fasting. You didn't want to miss this. Because look at the example I'm using Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And he didn't have it easy. His was even worse. A lot of kids were killed. Just because they were trying to kill one kid, one person. They killed many children. Wow. Somebody said, I used to be a sickly, as so sickly as a child. Battles with afflictions for so long. Wow. It's all part of God's plan. Yeah, it's going to make sense. Gonna make sense someday. Oh, some of you are crying. I guess you've suffered a lot. Jesus did not have it easy, guys. Jesus did not have it easy. So you'll be fine. You will be just fine. It says, For I know the plan that I have for you. This is Jeremiah 29 11. All these scriptures I'm quoting, some of you already know them, but save them so you can. Meditate on them. For I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster. To give you a future and a hope. So whatever you are going through, it's a plan for good and not for disaster. It will not break you. It will not destroy you. It's going to give you a future and a hope. It's going to give you an expected end. It may look bad right now, but don't worry. He said, it is not for disaster. It won't kill you. It will give you a future and hope. Wow. Wow. You are going to be great for God. Oh my God, I'm tingling all over. I think there are so many angels. It's like coming from my head down. Like it's like... Like God is really up to something. You know, these fastings, I don't really know what to preach. I just come sit here and God just starts bringing out these words from my mouth. And then I had a note here. I say it could be good or bad 
But in all, give thanks. We learn both ways. It could be good or bad. Each connection could be good or bad. Connection with people could be good or bad. But in all, give thanks because we learn both ways. Good relationship we learn. Bad relationship we learn. And then 1 Thessalonians 5.18 In everything, give thanks to God. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. In everything, what you're going through right now, give thanks to God. In fact, everybody, say this to your God or type it. Thank you, Lord, for all that I have been through. Thank you, Lord, for all that I've been through and for what I am going through now. I know you have a plan for me. Yeah, you got to say it. Thank you, Lord. You see, in everything, give thanks to God. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. In your sufferings, in your betrayal moment, in your persecution, in the time you were sick, afflicted, in the time you were homeless, Thank you, Lord, for all I've been through and what I'm still going through now. I know you have a plan for me. You got to thank him. Look at Jesus. Everything happening was fulfilling prophecy and they were bad. But prophecies were being fulfilled. Can you imagine? Who would think that was a prophecy? At that time, they're not thinking it. It's when it has finished happening, they'll say, oh, wow. That was a prophecy that just got fulfilled. Yeah, thank you, Lord, for all that I've been through and what I am going through now. I know you have a you have a plan for me. That's right. You have a plan for me. He created us. He knows what he wants us to become, who he wants us to become. He's planned everything out. Nothing is a mistake. That betrayer is not a mistake. That persecutor is not a mistake. All blended into the plan of God for your life. Knowing this, you will not be surprised when God reveals certain things to you. You will just accept it and move on. Hallelujah. I have a lot of scriptures on that, but I'll pause for now. What have you learned so far before I go further? What did you learn from all of this? God said that he's going to appear to somebody after this and ask you if you understood what I said. That do you not understand why you're going through all this? Someone that had a lot of questions. Wow. 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 Oh my God. I'm so happy. Whenever I minister to you guys, because I'm not the one preaching, it's the Holy Spirit. Even me, I'm getting answers too. <laughs> Don't be surprised though. The message is not only for you, it's for all of us, including me, because me, me, me I have been so afflicted. Even this, my eye does not work. I can't see. If I do like this, the only thing I can see is from down here. I can't see up here. This is the only eye that is good. And even with this eye, I wear contacts. Contact lens. This woman of God that is powerful doing this. My eye don't damage for one cut. Yeah. Hmm. I don't understand. Somebody says she learned that our suffering is for a purpose. Hallelujah. Wow. Look at this. A lot of you got some powerful message from this. I'm going to put it on the screen. Wow. In everything, give thanks. Learn to be grateful and patient. Wow. Thank God you've learned. Do not give up on God.
child. God has a plan for us. I'm just putting on the screen. When I see the answers, I'm smiling. That's right. God does not make mistakes. Hallelujah. Never look down at your situation. I like that one. Wow. We must give thanks for good and bad. This is school of power. Wow. Purpose never dies. Wow. I learned God is in control. I learned that instead of anger, we should appreciate the experience because that's what softens us. Hmm. Thank God in all situations. There's a lot of comments, guys. Wow. Yes, I like the song. And for the pleasure Oh my god, that was so cool. I like that other song. To receive glory, honor, and power. For thou hast created all things, and for the pleasure. Wow, somebody said, God is the master planner in good and bad. I am grateful for my enemies. Wow. This one can be able to pray for her enemies. This one can be able to love her enemies. Because now she knows they are all part of the plan of God. Wow! Wow! Oh my God! Wow! Wow, look at this. All right, so I think, I think a lot of people got this message. God is so pleased right now. Yeah. To receive glory, honor, and power. God is so pleased right now. God is so pleased. So now we understand. So when God begins to reveal things to us, we should not be too should not be regretting or whatever we should just know actually god just reminded me eh? you see when joseph had that dream and the angel of the lord told him to take the baby and his mother to egypt he actually mentioned who the enemy is say herod will try to kill the child god revealed the heart of the king to him like Joseph on his own would not want to understand why Herod would want to kill Jesus. Like he's not gone to Herod's palace or anything. Like he has nothing to do with Herod. But God revealed deep secret. God revealed hidden things. Something that he had no idea. The wise men didn't tell them anything. They just left. Wow. God revealed something to Joseph that Joseph will be wondering why. Why would Herod want to kill him? Why? To receive glory. 
And that's how God will reveal things to you about people that want to kill you, people that try to kill you, people that did something for you. But God will give you direction on what to do. Do you understand? Hallelujah. I want to show this video. Joy, you guys know Joy, right? The one that was raped by the voodoo priest, that God delivered her. She told me that God laid it in her heart to send my mom um, a birthday video. It was so good that I said, let me show it here. She did it for my mother. She didn't do horizontal, but I love this so much. I said, I'll show it here. Let's watch it. A very splendid time to our beloved Apostle, Apostle Princess Bellemcy, and to all School of Palm members all the way from Nigeria. As I am led in my spirit to take cognizance of today by celebrating a very significant personality in the life of our beloved Apostle, no other person than our wonderful grandma happy birthday grandma it is such an honor an exceeding great joy to be a rare vessel through which god brought to earth a rare apostle in our generation we are privileged to be under such anointing such power and such expression of god's totality and bringing down divinity here on earth the least I can do is to take out of my time to celebrate you, Grandma, and to say for making yourself available to be a mother to our Mama Apostle Princess Belemsi and to be a vessel through which God brought such a vessel here on earth. Happy birthday, Grandma. This is going to be the beginning of God's unfathomable blessings upon your life and everyone that's connected to you. It is such a joy to know you, Grandma. Thank you so much for being a mother to us, to be, for being a grandma to us all. And once again, a very powerful birthday to you. Hence, I made this, I composed this song to, for you, Mama, on this special day. Enjoy. God bless you, Ma Grandma. Praise the Lord. That was a surprise though. She told me she made a video for my mom. And I watched it. I was like, wow, this is so good. I need to show it up here. And this, you know this lady can speak English, eh? You see how God is, she, she's glowing. Speak English for the whole world. I, I, I was confused. <laughs> But it sounded good to me. How many of you like it? My mom will be so happy. She's not even seen it yet. <laughs> I say, join not grandma, grandma, grandma. I confuse. <laughs> oh my God. Praise the Lord. So God blended even my mom's birthday into his plan. For our day one of our fasting so this is day one of our seven days fast this is video two i'm going to end here for now the first video was eight hours this is two hours so it's total of 10 hours i will go to sleep so you got time to catch up watch that one and this 
our YouTube video because of the video I showed in the first one. They deleted the YouTube video. But we're also trying to try that rumble. We're going to try it out. But we're on Facebook, Princess Belemzi, Belema Abili, Holy Ghost Fellowship, Apostle Princess Belemzi. Pick any of them and watch. And um, Father is going to visit you guys. And God said in this fasting that just be paying attention. Some of you will have visions. Some of you will have dreams. Some of you will hem even right now as you go to sleep. Some of you will have visitations. They will ask you, did you like the message? Do you understand why you're going through that? Some of you will see yourself coming out of traps, cages, see, or something. Because breakthrough is also deliverance, right? If you check the flyer, the scripture that I put on there, I said, um, I put a scripture on there. And that's Psalm 34, verse 17. It said, the righteous cry out, and the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. Deliver them out of all their troubles, meaning giving them breakthrough in every area of their lives. So you, God, will deliver you from all your troubles in the name of Jesus. As you go to sleep, as you go to rest, may Father show up for you. So you two can testify. We still have six more days to go. Remember, we're going to eat on day three, right? Once it's six o'clock, we can break. But for now, day one, day two, it's dry. You can drink water. I even blessed water in the first video. So if you missed it, you can go watch it and have your water blessed. But today is already finished. It's almost six o'clock. Before you know tomorrow, before you know... This, this these fastings are so easy. I don't know about you guys. Like me, I'm going to sleep because I didn't sleep last night. So I love you guys. It is well with you. I will see you on day two. Please share this video if you haven't shared. And you can still invite. Anyone can still join us for the fast. If they've already eaten on day one, it's fine. They can start with us day two. And even if they don't want to fast and they just want to watch the videos, God will still touch them. All right? And do according to how your body can take use wisdom. All right. Love you guys. It is well with you. I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye-bye. I am announcing my daughter to the world. Is the most powerful woman of God that will ever exist in this world.
have vindicated my daughter. I have given her so much power. I have given her the keys. She came on a special assignment. She is my chosen one. She will deliver a lot of people. She will save millions of people. Can anyone stand against the word of God? Play it again, Trey. Play it again, Trey. Play it again, Trey. Play it again. Vindication, 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 vindication. Vindication, 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 vindication. Yay! Yo! Now we say this is from Princess Balemzi Studios right now in Houston, Texas, America. You cannot miss this because God has spoken by Himself, all by Himself, through the mouth of the woman of God, through the book, man. You can't read this book, Vindication. Alexis on the mic, Mr. Mav is on the mic, love on the keys, and we are going to say, Go we'll get your book, go we'll get your book now, get your book, we'll get your book now, get your book. Get your book now. Vindication song challenge number one. Signing off. Signing off right now. Number one bestseller. Bestseller hey, people. Hey, hey, vindication. It's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful day, beautiful day. Yeah. It's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful day, beautiful day. Yeah. It's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful day, beautiful day. Vindication, vindication, vindication. Get your copy at vindicationbook.com. Princess Celestia's Ministry School of Power. It's a beautiful day. 
It's a beautiful day It's a beautiful day Beautiful day yeah.